Hey everybody, it's me, Asimilos, and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to Reddit. Welcome back to the r slash pro revenge subreddit. An amazing place where I read out some stories about people who got some of the best revenge in their lives. Where today we will see a bully kicked out of school and a scammer getting scammed. Alright, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. When you get accepted into the degree pro program and university of your bully's choice, and they didn't. So during high school, I actually got bullied a lot because of how introverted I am. I live in the Philippines, and having dark skin could actually spell disaster for somebody like me. I was not really into socialization, so I was the awkward nerd that everyone thinks they could walk over. It was not that bad, but there are days which I really harbor disdain for everybody. Fast forward to senior year, and just when I was about to file for university application, I learned that most of my degree choices I did not consider were the ones my bullies chose. So I sort of copied the degrees in their application forms and also applied for the top universities here in the Philippines, in which the jerks also beamed for. Those universities were their dream schools. They had endlessly talked about carrying over their perfect lives into those schools. For the months to come, there was a lot of taunting, insulting and degrading that happened when they found out that I had applied to the same schools and programs they did. Little did they know that I was actually one of the top students in the whole class, but I successfully kept it a secret from everybody since the culture of smart shaming is quite prevalent here. I already had more than enough to deal with for one whole school year. I was good with examinations, interviews and essays. The application process wasn't that hard. Enter graduation week. All universities release their results around a week before our school's graduation date. To nobody's shock, except for my half-witted inbred bullies, I got into all of the unis with my first choice degrees, with scholarships to boot. Word came out and my tormentors brought their symbolic pitchforks and torches ready to persecute me. They filed a petition to the principal to not let me graduate because I had allegedly cheated on my applications. But by the time they had said all of their insults to me, I was already bulletproof. Their words were useless. No matter how hard they tried to pick on me, I knew deep inside that they will never ever take what they had always wanted to have, but could never achieve. I took satisfaction knowing that it slapped them so hard that the person they belittled so heavily is actually going to get the tasty end of the stick. It was also quite surprising to know that I actually enjoyed the major that my bullies planned to take. Well, this one... It's just, it's it's nice because someone gets bullied a lot and gets picked on and then they just come out and they, you know, they're bullied and, you know, they just, they just do better than their bullies. It's just the best type of revenge. It's just, you know, sure you bully me, but I'll be better than you in every way possible. And that's what happens. And this person did exactly that. So yeah, good on you. All right. This one seems like a short and good one. Eat my sandwiches. I'm going to burn your tongue off. This happened to my father a couple of years ago. He brought lunch from home every day, especially a sandwich and a water bottle. So he noticed that his lunch would be missing every day and he couldn't find it. This happened for around a month or two and he was not happy about it. My dad decided to take some revenge. Me and him went to his apartment complex, or it seemed like it, and got some ghost pepper powder. The next day he put a ton of it on his sandwich and he went to work. He says that he saw his sandwich in the road with one bite taken out of it. My father never found out who that guy was, but my dad got to eat all of his sandwiches in peace from that day on. Oh, this one's good. Short and sweet. Eat my sandwich. I'll put some ghost pepper in it. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful revenge. Ooh, this one looks like it could be good. Bully and harass multiple people, including mentally disabled kids. I'll get you expelled. So, I've been lurking around for a while and decided to post something. Anyways, BF1 is Bully's friend 1, BF2 is Bully's friend 2, D is disabled kid, me is me, and F is friend. So, anyways, back in 6th grade, a few years ago, I had a bully in my class. I also had a disabled kid. I'm not sure what was wrong with him, but he had something wrong in his brain. So, anyways, disabled kid has no friends, no one likes him, Bully is getting in trouble every single day, he bullies everyone. Disabled kid was next. I was sitting on a bench eating my lunch when I hear swearing from my class. I see the bully and his friends bullying him. The disabled kid can defend himself, but the bully would just run and come back. Eventually, the disabled kid was forced under the building, my class was elevated, and grabbed a massive stick to chase the bully away. Then, I see him still harassing disabled kids, so I step in 
and I say to the bully, how about you F off and leave the disabled kid alone? It's none of your business. Go away. I said, F off. I was at least 10 centimeters taller, so I stood directly above him and said, leave him alone. At this point, the disabled kid runs up to the class, so I say to the bully, did you hear me? Or are you deaf? I said, scram. No, F off. He started it. You do this to everyone, so F off. Hey, leave bully alone. No, you F off too. He started it. He was sexually assaulting us. Well, first of all, you had clothes on, so no. On seconds, his brain can't comprehend what's right and wrong. Because he doesn't get punished. Did you ever hear what I said? Scram. No. Yes. No. At this point, I pushed him and say, get the F out of here. At this point, they leave and I go up to confront the disabled kid. I talked to him and calmed him down. And when my friend came up to me, nice job, mate. You put that jerk in place. Yeah, idiots thinking they can get away with it. Anyway, the whole thing was reported to a teacher and I have at least 10 witnesses supporting me. At this point, it's clear the bully and his gang of buttholes aren't going to get in much trouble. Just a few detentions. The principal and all of the staff knew me very well as I was class leader twice. A student council representative once we meet with the other members and discuss what we can do to make the school better and was currently school captain. They trusted me. The bully and his goons have been suspended multiple times, so later I talked to Disabled Kid and asked if he could help me with my revenge plan. So I went to the principal and said that they dragged Disabled Kid to a remote area of the school, beat him up, and shoved his face in the toilet that they had recently pooed in. I said this happened after school and I saw it and intervened but wanted to report it to her. She asked me to bring Disabled Kid to see if these claims were true. Disabled Kid understood what I was doing and followed along. He said it was true. The guys got expelled and investigated for attempted murder and assault. The attempted murder was dropped and they ended up getting charged with assault. Don't know how long they spent, but everyone in school was happy once again. If you don't think this is real, you're allowed to think that, but I assure you this is real. I know that it seems a bit crazy, but it's less crazy than some of the posts I've seen here. Anyways, thanks for reading. I'd like to start, this seems 100% real. Sure, it's very intense by the end, but it, it, it sure sounds real. So this kid was, I mean, who bullies a disabled kid? Why would you do that? And if they did, they, they, they deserve it. They completely deserve it. So I, I, I think like, um, you know, maybe lying was a bit, wasn't the best way to get around it, but yeah, if, yeah, if you did it, well, I mean, yeah, so the bullies got what they deserved. All right, look at this, how I scammed the scammer who scammed me for a $700 pairs of pair of shoes. That's reckon, I reckon that's the most times I've, I've, I've seen the word scam in a single line. I'm a shoe reseller, which by no means is a job or profession, for me at least, but is an easy, fun way for me to make some extra money while in school without having to work a job. Reselling can sometimes be a bit risky, especially when it comes to actually giving a buyer their shoes or items. When it's in person, you could get jumped or robbed. And when you're doing it shipped, you can get scammed and lose a lot of money. Now, this story is about the first month or two I got into reselling. I had managed to buy a pair of Yeezy 350 V2 Olives for about 220 US. These shoes at the moment go for about 700 plus Canadian dollars. I posted on my Instagram where people sell their shoes items, how much I was looking for them, and if anyone wanted to negotiate a deal. A couple of hours after posting, I had a private message from a guy who said he was interested in buying. He said 585 as his starting offer and about after a couple of minutes of negotiating, we had agreed on 650 flat. He told me that he never buys or ships first, which a lot of scammers do, which set a red alarm for me. Not wanting to be rude, I said something along the lines of, my friend might want to buy them, I'll get back to you. Fast forward a few weeks, we've been chatting about normal stuff like which shoes we like, how much money we've made so far, etc. He then brought up if my friend has bought the shoes. I told him, no, and he asked me if he could buy it again. I, reluct I reluctantly agreed after 15 minutes of convincing me. When it comes to selling shoes on Instagram, resellers usually have a thing they post called a ref post, where basically you post an image and when you complete business with a client, they comment legit and just give feedback so when you're doing business with a new person, they know to trust you. Anyways, he gave me his address and I shipped to him the next day. He said to me that he would give me the cash once he confirmed they were legit shoes which they were, and arrived in the proper state that I had said they were. I had tracking on the shipment, so when they arrived about a week later, I told him he had to pay me. He blocked me. I felt stupid for letting him scam me like that, but I wasn't going to let him get away with it. 
I got his postal code, which meant when I looked up the tracking, I could tell where he was located. He didn't give me his actual name though. That night, I was just thinking what I could do and I reviewed what information was given to me. I then realized one of my close friends, who I'll name, Jack, lived in the same general area. That night, I texted him and asked if he was able to help. He said, yeah, and this is the plan we came up with. We'd make a fake account on Instagram. I would buy a couple of followers and get a bunch of random accounts to comment on the reference post. Then we would DM him and try to give him a good offer and meet up with him locally and get the shoes back. I didn't really expect the plan to work, but the next morning, the scammer negotiated a deal with Jack and we were going to meet up at a local mall. It was in Sedoris, Illinois. I'm not allowed to give out his postal code, unfortunately. The deal was that he would give him around $600 for a pair of Yeezys. In his head, he had just made $600 scamming a person, but little did he know, he was about to get instant karma. Jack had the money in an envelope, so he would have to open the envelope, and when he was counting the money, Jack was supposed to bolt with the shoes. What we had done was put a 20 at the front of a bunch of ones behind it to make it look real. But when they met up, he didn't even open the envelope, so he basically gave the shoes away for $30. We were both laughing over this on FaceTime afterwards. I told, I told him he could keep the shoes as long as he gave me $400. He sent me the money, kept the shoes, and he ended up selling them for around $600. So in the end, it was a win-win. The scammer later ended up DMing the account, and we just blocked him. I just want to add that the scammer paid $45 for me to ship to him and he lost his account because we exposed him for being a scammer. Nice, nice. When you scam a scammer. And um, I just, this guy, I, I'm just surprised by he was so careful, you know, to, to like actually get the scam through. He was, you know, made sure. And then when he got, when he sold the shoes, he didn't even count the money. So he would... He just sold them for $30 instead of, you know, a, a proper amount. And uh, these guys, they could say they scammed him, but <laughs> this guy, he fooled himself. He, I reckon he just, I reckon this scammer just sort of played himself. And if he, and if he does things like that, he just deserves to be scammed. All right, everybody. I think that's about it for today. That is more than enough. Plenty of fun, fun stories. If you like what you see, definitely subscribe to the channel for more content just like this, for more beautiful stories from Reddit. I really enjoy these videos, so I hope you do too. And if you do, tell me in the comments down below. But for now, guys, all I want to do is see you all here next time. Goodbye!